we got here, we got the resultant of vector forces. This is kind of going to be a summary for all of those chapter two videos that we're watching on 3D forces, okay? We learned that there are three different ways you can express 3D vectors, right? I don't have it up there. I thought I did. Number one, what is it? Do you remember? Do you remember? Mm, not really. We just went over this. Okay, number one, blue triangles. Okay, number two, directional cosines. And number three, our, with coordinates or our lambda hat method, right? Those are the three ways that I can give vectors. So in this problem I've got for you here today, it has all three. Okay, so let's see what we got here. It says find the resultant of vectors F1, F2, and F3. So there's three orange vectors, one, two, three, and we gotta find the resultant of those. We gotta add them together, okay? And then find the directional cosine angles of that resultant. I don't know how to do that. It's super easy, yo. If we can write these vectors in IJK form, this is gonna be a piece of cake. Let's see if we can do it, okay? Let's start with vector F1. Okay, how is vector F1 given? Here's your three options right here, right? That looks like blue triangles to me because those triangles are blue. I know the test, I had black and white test and I told my students, I said on the test, the triangles may be gray and they were like, no, it'll be okay. Okay, so let's see, let's use blue triangles on this. So if we remember our blue triangle equations go like this, right? F X equals F um, sine theta Z cosine of phi, Fy is F sine theta Z sine of phi, and Fz is F cos theta Z. So the question is, what is F? What is phi? What is theta Z? Okay, so F is given, that's 80. Okay. And so let's see, phi, all right, phi is from the x-axis going that way is positive. Oh, but it's back this way. So I go back 90 to get to here and then come back 30. So from here over is, is uh, 30 degrees, then from here to here must be 60, but it's in the negative direction. So that's negative 60 degrees, okay? And then theta z, theta z is from positive z, so I go 90 degrees to get to the floor. This vector is going into the floor, so I gotta go another 45 down. So 90 plus 45 is 135. So what's left to do? Take those numbers, plug them into those equations, and I get vector uh, F1 written in IJK form, right? So here it is, F1 equals, all right, here we go. Okay, I got my calculator here. All right, so um, 80 times the sine of theta z, which is 135, oh, parentheses, times the cosine, cosine of phi, which is, ooh, negative 60. Negative, oh, that's not negative. Yeah, it is negative um, 60. Okay, let's see what that gets you. I get you 28.28, okay? So uh, FX, 28.28 I hat, right? FY, okay, that's gonna be 80 times the sine of 135 times the sine, sine, I almost said cosine, of um, negative 60, right? And that gives you negative 48.98. Okay. And then the last one is 80 times the cosine of 135, which is negative 56.57. And that is that whole thing is Newton's, okay? So, I got positive, negative, negative. Positive x, is that in the positive x direction? Yes. Is it in the negative y direction? Uh, yes. Is it in the negative z? Yeah, all right. 
Okay, and then the other thing you can do real quick, check this out, watch this. 28.28 squared plus 48.98 squared plus 56.57 squared equals, and then the square root of that, right, equals, bam, check it out, equals 80, right? So that is the that that is 80. That's how big that is. It's just broken down into i, j, k, into x, y, z. All right, piece of cake. The next vector f two. All right, is this guy right here? How is he given? You know what? Look here. I've got the angle from the y to the vector, from the z to the vector, from the x to the vector. Right, and so that's directional cosines, isn't it? Okay. And those equations go like this, fx equals f cos theta x, fy equals, that's a y, f cos theta y, and fz equals f cos theta z. All right, let's see. And so, of course, theta x is um, 120, Theta y is, what is theta y? Right there, 45. And theta z is 60. Okay? So all we got to do is plug those things into these equations. And we know f as well, don't we? f is, f is given right there at 60. Okay? So here we go. 60 cosine of uh, 120 equals negative 30. Okay, so this is vector F2, negative 30 I hat, okay? Um, and then what? Uh, 60 cosine of, what's theta y? 45 is uh, 42.43. And then the last one is 60, um, oh, cosine of 60, which is 30, right? Okay. So, negative, positive, positive. Is this vector negative, positive, positive? It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, yes, it is, actually. All right, so here we go. F3, last one, last vector. We got to get him in IJK. Should we check it? Let's check it. 30 squared plus 42.43 squared plus 30 squared equals square root equals, well, I didn't do very good. 30 squared plus 30 squared plus 42.43 squared equals, and then square root of that. Okay, how about that answer? Bam! 60.00. Mm, it's always good to check just to make sure you, you got your equations right and you did everything just right. It's good to check. It's a check step, so like if you do that and you check the signs, dude, you know you've got it right. There is no way to miss this, right? Well, there's a way. Y'all can come up with a way, but it would be hard. All right, here we go. Last one is this guy right here. Okay, now that guy looks like a lambda hat vector because on this vector, I know all of the dimensions to get from the origin over to that point right there. Now, well, where is that point? How do I get there? Okay, and you just do this. They'll call this point O, and then I'll call that point A, right? So from go to O to A, it would be A minus O. Well, A minus O. O's are all zeros, aren't they? Because it's the origin. So the, the, the uh, vector is just going to be the coordinates of point A. And the coordinates of point A in this case are 4 I hat plus um, 5 J hat plus, it's uphill, plus 2 K hat. Okay? That's how you get from there to there. How you get to Grandma's house, right? Okay, and then divided by the square root of 
4 squared plus 5 squared plus 2 squared. All right, what is that? Let's see, 4 squared plus 5 squared plus 2 squared equals, and then square root of that is, uh, let's see, bum, 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 6.71. Okay, so then divide this out, and I'm going to get my lambda vector. So lambda is equal to, and lambda, if you recall, is a little unit vector of magnitude 1 in the direction of that force vector, right? So 4 divided by 6.71 equals 0.596, no, 0.596 I hat. 5 divided by 6.71 is 0.745, so plus 0.745 J hat. And then finally, 2 divided by 6.71 is 0.298. Okay. So there's lambda hat. So, but if you remember, we need the force vector. Remember this, the force vector is equal to the magnitude times the lambda hat, the direction, magnitude times direction. Well, there's the direction. So if I take this direction and I multiply by the magnitude, which is right there, 35 Newtons, okay? Multiply that through, that gets me my vector I'm looking for, okay? So here we go. Um, let's see, 0. 0.596 times 35 equals 20.86. I hat plus um, 0. 0.745 times 35, 26.08, whoops, And then the last one, 0.298 times 35, 10.43 k hat. And all of that is newtons, okay? So there we go. F1, F2, F3, we used all three of our methods and we broke all three down into Cartesian coordinates, I, J, K, X, Y, Z. That's pretty good, right? So now they wanted they want the resultant of those three. Well, how hard is that going to be? Piece of crack. I mean, piece of cake, right? Easy, right? So F resultant is equal to, all right, here we go. 28.28 plus um, 20.86 minus 30. So I just added up all of those, and I got 19.14. Okay, add up all the J's. All right, I like to do the positive ones first if you weren't following along with me there. 42.43 plus 26.08 minus uh, 48.98, 48.98, Okay, that's J hat. And then finally, um, 30 plus 10.43 minus 56.57 equals negative 16.14. Okay, and so there, boom, there is your resultant vector. Okay, that's what they're asking us for. Oh, and, oh, there's an and. And find the directional cosine angles of the resultant. So they want us to find, if, if we were talking about the book, it would say alpha, beta, and gamma. We're calling them theta x, theta y, and theta z. It's the same thing. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so let me, let me make myself a little bit of room. I'll do it right here. Okay. All right, here we go. So this, all I need is I need to take this. I need, I need the magnitude of that, right? So the magnitude of vector fr is equal to, and that's easy to find, isn't it? It's, it's equal to those numbers squared and square root, right? Plus 19.14 squared plus 19.53 squared equals second square root. Okay, boom, equals 31.75.
That's the magnitude, right? So how do we find those? Well, it's easy, right? Cosine of theta x is equal to fx, which is right there, 19.14, divided by f, which is right there, 31.75. And again, cosine of theta y is equal to, here's the y component right there, 19.53 divided by 31.75. And then finally, cosine theta x, theta x is right there, and the negative is important, so negative 16.14 divided by 31.75. All right, let's do those right quick. So 19.14 divided by 31.75 equals, and then inverse cosine of that is equal to, so theta, x is equal to 52.93 degrees. Okay, the next 19.53 divided by 31.75 is 0.615 and then inverse cosine of that is equal to 52.04. And then finally, one more, negative 16.14 divided by 31.75 equals inverse cosine of that is equal to, it's a negative number, right? So inverse cosine of a negative is going to be bigger than 90. It's 120.55. Okay, and that are the, those are the directional angles for that resultant vector, right? So there's, there's the resultant vector answer right there, okay? And there are the angles right there. That's not too hard, is it? We had to use all three techniques to break each vector into IJK, then add the apples to the apples, the oranges to the oranges, and the bananas to the bananas, and that's the answer. Okay, go tackle some problems, and let's make some hundreds.